All right, what's up, y'all? It's like a fan here. As y'all about title today's video, we're here to talk about things nobody wants you to know on defense in NBA 2K24. So, in today's video, I have compiled my best eight minutes of clips in 2K24, and we're putting them all in this exact same cutup for me to break down for all you guys to see. So, I hope you enjoy. If you do, feel free to drop a like, sub if you're new to them, notice all that good stuff, and like always, tries one to 2,000 likes. So this is obviously all defensive related for the most part. So let's get straight into this. We're here to talk about all types of different things between on-ball defense, off-ball defense, defense as a team together in this aspect right here, even obviously chase down blocks and defensive settings, all that stuff. So in this first clip, I want to show you the power of double bigs on defense. And this is something that I got to say, I believe is one of the best lineups in the game. And when you have two bigs on the court on 3v3, you can do this type of defense where if you have Bonnie as our on-ball defender right here and he gets beat, if he's willing to admit that he is beat on that, I can go send it to the paint for the pick and roll that is inevitably coming. Or even if it's a pick and pop, I can stay out for that. But now we have the double bigs in the pick and roll defense. And even this right here is extremely doable. I entirely believe in the power of double bigs as long as they're seven foot and below as far as holding their own on the perimeter. And not to mention, you can see Bonnie gets backdoored right here and I just send it off the corner because the shot clock is low. So quick little clip cut up right there that I did want to show. Anyway, moving into the next clip, I have this roamer spot that we're going to call this. So this is once again me in that corner, but it's not in pick and roll defense anymore. It's in the it's in the ISO defense. So considering I'm the big man and Bonnie's the point guard again, they're going to keep trying to attack Bonnie way more than they attack me, whether it's on the interior off cuts or give the ball to him and try and get to the basket. So either way, you can see I see Penny right here go for that drop. So now I'm in a spot where I'm a, I'm a very predictable no pass to my corner spot. So instead of me trying to hawk this and go play a passing lane like I actually showed in last year's things nobody wants you to know on defense in 2K23, this one right here is me having low steal rating, yet at the same time, crazy vert. I got that physicals takeover active right now. And like I said, it's very obvious he's not going to pass to my corner. So considering both these two just jumped right here, it's inevitable one of them's going to have to swing to my corner because that's just the likeliest route as far as their rotation they can make. So instead, I'm going to fly up to the top and go for a jump contest on the three-point line because, again, you want to play that shot clock awareness as well. You can see it's at 4.5. So I just go ahead and jump to the top. I get some crazy block. Let's let, let's let that one play in full speed right here. So again, it's very obvious he's not going to want to dot my corner. I fly up to the top, jump and block that. <laughs> I got to say, that was a fire play in the moment as well. And then we're out in transition, grab it, and we're able to get it to go right there. So now in this next clip, we're going to talk about on-ball defense and what I want to call a hyper switch as well. So we're going to be talking about this quite a bit in this video, but on-ball bumpy defense getting up on them and in their chest is definitely what I suggest for you to be playing on, on defense in this game. Again, we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video though. So now, once again, they're going to be like beating me on the drive. So Bonnie's down low. I'm switching out and I'm rotating. You can see those two just hyper switched. We're putting the big man into the paint and Bonnie on the perimeter. That's very, very big. You can just call that hyper in the moment if you want. And boom, it'll just alert your teammate that he should drop. You should rotate out to him. Now check this out. Instead, they try and dominate him again with another cut so they're gonna switch that as well and then me and Penny obviously we can both like we can both hang on the interior so he trusts me on my own cut so we're able to pull that one off a little bit more seamless and with less help so again he picks up for me on the drive Penny's gonna drop down Bonnie rotate out Bonnie gets beat on the cut so Penny's ready to switch boom he sees that a bigger player is trying to attack him he doesn't worry about my cut because obviously I can chase that for myself and then boom, they're, they're at the end of the clock right here. Can't put anything up. I jumped way too early on that rebound, by the way. But either way, we're able to get that to go. Works out perfectly. Now, instead of tips, I'm here to show you a couple of tricks for the next couple of uh, plays that we have. So this one right here is going to be holding Y button on your block attempts, whether it's on the three-point line or for chase down blocks in the paint or anything like that. I've said this for years and years. I truly believe that is a thing, and I've said this for years, and I think a lot of people have agreed with it as well over the years as well. So again, this right here, I'm holding Y button, and I believe that gives you a ridiculously more aggressive jump when it comes to your blocks on the perimeter or the interior. So this one right here, boom, flinging straight at the top of the key with the 83 vert on my build and his super crazy <laughs> just block animation. That's insane. Now I want to show you something that will actually alert you guys a little bit as well. So you're going to see I tap my right bumper right here and that pulls up your icons defensively. Now my icon is set to that A button on, off rip. I, I probably put it on him because I've been trying to guard point guard. But in this clip, I want to keep on chasing ball, but I want to be able to have my arrow on that player. And having your arrow, whether you turn the arrow off or not, it's complete BS. I don't believe in that at all of turning arrows off just makes it so you don't play with an arrow. I don't believe that. So 
If you do play with arrows, you can control them mid-game 24-7 by hitting your right bumper, and then you can tap the icon of the person that you want to be guarding. So in this case, B, hit my B button, and it switches over here to the on ball. And as you can see, boom, then we're going to be able to swing AK over to the corner. Tonic's going to pick up for me anyway with our defensive versatility. And, you know, he's a big, I'm a big, so that all works, and we can all just, like, switch whatever. Right here, they switch, they, you know, swing it out to the perimeter, and again, holding Y, for that block animation i mean it's insane bro so now i want to show to you the physical takeover plus getting up on him and playing in your in your face defense in this game so again we're right here on him the whole way through i'm playing him like crazy another thing i want to be showing you right here is when you get into overload sets I highly encourage you play the, the opponent's right hand. You want to force them into your two defenders if you're talking 3v3 or 5v5. Wherever an overload is and there's more people, you want to lead them that way. So I'm playing his right. I'm making sure I don't get beat that way. I'm pushing him into my help defense. And now right here, I'm setting up a little bit wide. I'm ready to play sides on the one and two combo where I know my point guard can handle both of these matchups. If you are with someone that can handle both matchups, you want to be able to definitely play sides and switch everything on those. However, let's say AK right here is involved in the defense, but it's this guy in the screen game rather than this guy right here. So let's say it was their three instead of their two. That's where you would want to play a little bit more front back. He'd be up on him tighter, trying to get through those screens. I'm in more hedge defense rather than sides defense because then my point guard can't really switch on to the threes or anything like that. Or in this case, like I said, the big pretty much. So right here we're playing sides we're playing wide i'm here to take left he's here to take right not to mention by the way this is another thing that i want to give as far as tips interior defense in this game is really through the roof bro it's insane how well you can play with this stuff my point guard right here is six foot three and has like a six four wingspan or something like that and as you can see he's able to get that to be a red contest 52 percent right there and mind you it was obviously a very early as well but still able to get a ridiculous contest and trust your point guards on interior defense in this game same way they don't want to attack him right there Right here, as you're going to see, once again, we're just going to be playing an ISO defense, making sure I don't get beat to the left. We're jumping out at that hop back. Obviously, that's something people are very inclined to be doing in this year's game and last year's as well. I will say, though, don't jump at stuff like this. This right here is me holding up on my stick, and it just gave me a crazy like jump contest in that way, but it was not me tapping Y button or anything like that. You got to feel very confident in this type of defense in this year's game that you can get a contest with your hands up on something like that. You don't have to jump. You don't have to do anything crazy like that. So again, I'm protecting my left in that moment so that I don't have to get beat on that drive. If I do get beat on the drive, it's going to be to my right where I have another help defender right here and I can swing out to him easy and it's going to be hard for him to go anywhere. He can't wrap up here to get any further away from me. Like to give you guys some context on this whole playing the left of the of the defender right here or the left of my matchup right here if he beats me to the right where is this guy gonna go he can't he can't come all the way across to the corner because he's always gonna be moving toward me in that instance he can't just sit deeper here on the hash or else uh, you know obviously at that point if i got beat on the drive that very likely means that tonic's here in the paint anyway and if this guy cut and ak could step up and play two a little bit that means what they're gonna double cut they're gonna send two people to the paint nobody does that you can't do that i got a seven foot center that's sitting here playing into your defense on that in the first place so again you don't have to worry about that stuff like that ever so right there, we get a really good contest. Round the break, Tonic hits me, boom, dunk in transition. And now, ironically, we're gonna show a clip from the exact same clip right here. So we're back into the, the very next defensive possession. I'm gonna be playing that ISO defense, at least I think, which turns into screens, but either way, I'm able to get through it. Tonic's over to his matchup. Now, once again, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be taking away that left from this person right away. And whether this guy moves over to the corner or not, that's depending on what I do for defense here. If he comes back up to the top right now, that means I'm going to pass him up to Tonic if it looks like that I was going to be getting screened. But I didn't get screened, so I'm over it. And now I can establish that I'm on the right side of the screen if they go for another one. So let's say they were to reset right here. Point guard goes to the hash and then boom, they're resetting for another screen. I'm establishing that I'm now on the right side of the screen. We'll play sides because I have an equal defender to me where we can switch everything. But anyway. He ends up going in off that and goes to that drive. But again, I mean, hey, at the end of the day, I got 83 vert with the 92 block gold chase down seven footer. That stuff works like that. If you have a big defender with great vertical and block and all that stuff and good size, you, you are going to be able to play for chase downs like crazy in this game. Now, another thing I want to show, too, is like people sleep on the contestability in this game. Look at this. I am getting screened right now and I'm able to kind of blow it up and get through it. Like, obviously, I don't know if that's part to do with strength or anything like that, but you can see I'm going under the screen. I kind of get clipped, but I'm playing with my hands up and trying to get through that. 
and I mean, I, I definitely do get through it. As you can see, I get a crazy red contest right there, 92%. And just wanted to show with that clip, you can get crazy contests in this game, even if you only have 67 perimeter D like what I had in that clip too. So anyway, into defense right here, physical takeover. I want to show the power of this thing. So fighting through the screens, we're playing that on ball D. Look at this, Sh shrug over the screen. I'm moving fast, I'm moving strong. Physical take is giving me plus, plus 10 speed, plus 10 strength, all that stuff. Now we're into that hedge defense right here. Unfortunately, I do give up a rebound and I do want to show you guys this particularly. So like one thing I want to maybe mention defensively as far as some tips or secrets, if you will, in this in this aspect, be ready for any shot to go up. You don't want to just be playing fronting, like playing, you know, lane or anything like that in these moments. Always you want to like take away the basket, seal them off, get behind them and in, in between them and the basket because stuff like this can happen at any given moment. And as you can see, I give up free board just strictly off the fact that he just threw up some crazy shot that I didn't expect was going to be coming at any point in time right there. So right here is once again, talking about size defense. So I don't want to put myself in a situation where I'm chasing over this screen and dealing with putting tonic in a two on one because the best reason I know what to do in these on ball situations because I've lived this experience out in, in previous years. When this is a popper center and this guy can shoot, it's a very tedious thing to be in this spot right here when your lock in this situation is chasing over the screen and trying to hunt down a drive attempt where this guy really could have drove straight into tonic. This guy could pop to the top and then all of a sudden, if I'm chasing, that means the pop is wide open and tonic is left in a situation where it's clear I'm beat for a drive if he goes for it, unless I go for a chase down, obviously, because of my build. But in most situations, that's not the case. And then Tonic's left in a two-on-one situation that's really frustrating to deal with. However, there will be some times where the screen is going to be very weak and it really doesn't even like make an impact. So if I'm able to get over it, I guess it is what it is, you know, and, and this is very situational. I'm ready in this moment to get back to the center if he releases from that screen or if Tonic was also up tighter. Now, this is where I want to tell you guys as this defender right here. If you show your teammate that you're there for that side a whole lot more, you can take the initiative and be the one that is literally up here and a lot tighter on that. And in which case, if Tonic was about a step or two further in this direction, that's the one where I'm going to be stepping to the back end and ready to drop for that center because I know he is confidently going to give me someone else here to take him off that screen. Since he wasn't though and wasn't up there high, I'm chasing this a little bit more in that situation. So just wanted you to show you a couple f like freeze frame instances where that's really important to, to read and react rather than to anticipate everything. Now, if you as a defensive duo, you and your teammate can anticipate everything in that in that regard, kind of like how I used to do in Pro-Am last year, where essentially what I'm saying is if you play high and tight on the screen, the two of you, it gives this me like this player, me, the confidence that I can switch to that back end because I know my teammate's going to be there for this for this little move to the right. If I step back off this and Tonic is not up on that, then it just makes me look pretty bad too. So communication and rule setting between your teammates would be a very big deal if you want to really sweat this 3v3 stuff or even for Pro-Am for that matter, if you have a versatile defensive duo that you can switch everything on screens with. Communication and rules is very, very big in terms of that. Now, right here, you can see he dexes me over to the corner. Just want to show you once again, holding Y. I'm absolutely getting a crazy jump on that red contest. You know, he even times it on a slightly right there, which is very hard to do if you get a red contest on that. But anyway, into another clip on defense. I want to talk about once again, switch rules of how me and my team don't even have this figured out entirely. So to me right here, I'm, I'm shading this corner really hard. As you can see, like I'm, I'm here in the corner and in this situation, that would mean that I should have AK right here playing my middle and I'll take the rolls. I'll take the pick and roll, pick and pop, whatever the case may be. And I want him to step up to my point guard right here. But as you can see, he doesn't do that. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't have a teammate that's ready to step up right there, if he stops and shoots, this could be a wide open three. Now, Fortunately, these guys had way too much going on in this situation, and this is what AK told me he was playing for, believe it or not. I, I don't know if I believe him on this, but anyway, he says that he was playing for the corner right here, and that Tonic was going to be able to step up to this, and now I can play on the right side of that screen, and it's exactly what happens. So... To be fair, he's very right about that, but I'm obviously also very right about the fact that he could be playing that middle for me, and then I could be turning in to the right right here on the corner. But either way, again, rule, rules are very important when it comes to how you're going to be playing as a trio or a duo or as a five when it comes to any of this stuff in the Pro-Am or in just 2K in general. But aside from that, one of the other tips I have for defense too, hands up defense can really create a couple lanes in this game as well. So I absolutely advocate for it. If you have a low steal rating, and you want to play exactly like how I'm playing, I definitely encourage the whole hands up aspect of the defense because this is how I get like, 
honestly, probably 30 or 40% of my lanes in this game. I really do only have a 60 steel rating on this build, so like it's pretty hard to play lanes in most in most times, not to mention I'd rather play disciplined and conservative for things like this in the first place anyway. So I wanted to once again come back to the whole double bigs lineup right here in this discussion of how instead of having any of us on ball or the versatility to switch everything on screens, if you're guarding ISO, this is the power of the double bigs in the corners. So. Not only does Tonic kind of go for some crazy block right here, but I obviously respect it. I mean, it was a hop, it was a hop attempt that he kind of has to go for. But really good rotate from AK right there to rotate out to the corner on the drive attempt, because obviously as a guard, you want to protect yourself from that. Like if you got beat, there's no way he's recovering off that. So it's time to release. Know when you get beat if you don't have interior defense block or any chase down ability and send him off to your other teammate. Thing is, my other teammate right there goes for the block. So I'm like, hey, what's the chances that this guy doesn't see a block attempt like that and just go up for it again? So this is what I call the double block attempt, or in Pro-Am, I kind of call it like a blitz where I'm going for the second block. And as you can see, we get that to go right there. And it, whether this is comp Pro-Am on a pick and roll, whether it's, you know, just 3v3 park, stuff like that, this is a tried and true thing that very often happens, if I'm being real with you guys. Like, when, when they see one person jump, they think they're usually good for the most part. And it's hard to be patient when you're in that paint like that anyway, because he's come to a jump stop, he's completely set. You can't really recover off that in the first place, to be honest with you. They, like, you have to go and do something. So people generally lean towards just being okay with obviously going up with the take so anyway right here I want to show some help defense obviously this is something where I shouldn't have even done this you can see right here AK is obviously a lot closer to this corner so he drops for this one and kitchen is like the dropper off the corner into the paint I probably should not be doing this generally when I'm playing offense I'm looking to dot whatever the whoever the center is on on a drive and kick way more often than anybody else because you'll see people like me be very likely to do tendencies like this where you drop off the corner for no reason go for that block even though low-key I do make the play on that situation but again he, he didn't even rotate to me in the first place so you want to be a little bit more conservative when you do stuff like that and I want to show you guys even though I got a block on that I do think it's a bit of a mistake now with this one right here this is calculated so you can see my opponent is moving over to the overload side. And what I say in these situations, when it's overload on the 3v3, you want your perimeter oriented defender in less block, way more steel and perimeter defense to play two between the corner and, and, and wing right here and let your more into your defensive player play for that bait in the block or whatever you want to call it. So again, this is terrible spacing from the two players right here, but if one were in the corner and one were on the hash or anything like that on this overload, you can have one guy play two and then right here shots can just move out as you can see he gets completely bulldozered in this in this animation too. Boom, boom. So I'm able to come in there and help and obviously it was very low on the clock too. So no rotation even needed from him. But if there was more clock, he'd be able to just rotate out to the hash or the corner and kitchen can just play whichever one he's not able to get to. So that is very big to keep in mind as far as your size differential in terms of if you're on that overload, which one to do what role. So anyway, right here, I want to show two blocks in one possession. This one right here is a little bit more of an instinctive block. You can see Kitchen actually just kind of gets beat because he jumps. So once again, it's on it's almost on that same thing as what I was just talking about earlier with Tonic, where Tonic went for the double he went for the first jump on that help on that help and drop. So I'm there to play for the second jump, and at the end of the day, if, if I see the shot go up, I might as well go for this. And as you can see, we swap that out of here. Easy, easy, easy. So then into the next possession too, there's 11 seconds. They're going to go ahead and hit this guy right here. And then AK ends up in a cut situation. They, they get it to really not any, get anything to go right there. But you can see Kitchen gets beat on a drive. So I'm just down there for the help defense. Boom, get that to go too. So just not really super crazy tips or anything like that. But just wanted to show you guys that one as an example of mainly just when to go for blocks when not to essentially but anyway a couple really nice like chase downs being shown right here again this is just me trying to explain to you guys that i'd be holding y button on every single one of those when i go for these blocks it's holding that button and it's really aggressive as you can see so i'm trailing my my opponent is, is behind us but that's completely you know okay with me because as you can see like me and kitchen both get beat up court right here no one takes ball so I'm trailing, but I know that my opponent is not really a threat offensively just yet. He's not in position to do anything. So I'm like, eh, why not? I mean, <laughs> hey, sometimes you got to just front run people too. Obviously, we're winning by 19 to 6. So it's a little bit easy to do stuff like that when you're in the lead rather than, you know, uh, behind behind your opponent. But anyway, this clip right here was really fire. So this is like sort of a different style of defense than what I've, I'm usually showing you guys. This one is more of like a shadow type defense. And 
This is this is very much on some like cornerback technique in football where you can see I'm playing his offhand into playing offhand again into playing offhand again and I'm just trailing him and kind of shadowing him the whole time and then you can see he thinks he's good because he's, he's literally switched that up on me three times now and he probably thinks he's on his way to the basket real easy but we get that once again nice chase down block to go gold anchor gold chase down <laughs> making stuff happen so now i want to showcase hedge defense so this is where we're having someone fight through if this is an inside big man and that's typically what you want to do hedge hedge for more often than not because they're going to be lethal inside ability type builds where it's going to be a lot harder for your maybe smaller lockdowns or point guards to be able to guard them so what you want to do instead is take advantage of the fact that they can't shoot and play hedge defense where i'm just showing to anything that bonnie needs help for right here and as you can see we're not playing switch everything now here's the thing in some situations you are going to have to switch but it's going to be a lot less you know giving the other team a chance to get that switch off and as you can see right here he's moving around he's he's like obviously not got anything going and you know to be fair he could also be a shooter but in some situations you maybe just don't want to play the the switch everything defense so that's just you know another thing that we could even add to where it's a little bit hard to play that drop defense quote unquote that i just showed right here against poppers but it's still doable like i said you don't have to really like switch everything on everything but if he's holding that screen way too long and bonnie can't get over it and i gotta step to it that's where we want to go ahead and do that switch and then as you can see he's gonna hit him on the pop right here but like at that point he's gonna have to come to him eventually because this guy doesn't have any ball handles so then that's where we can just go ahead and reset right here and bonnie's gonna take the point guard again and i'll take the big on the roll everything patched up completely boxed we're good from there now once again talking about overloads when the point guard ends up on the same side as the corner in this situation or this can also go for a lot of different courts you want to force them into their you know teammates that are they're standing right next to so this guy can't go anywhere for this matter like as long as we got joey right here playing back in and he can just go ahead and take away the paint at that point he has to work himself out of that and as you're going to see i'm still fighting to force him into that right side because he can't get out of here if i don't let him he's going to have to reset to a teammate and move around off ball or something or like send this corner over and give him an open corner but at that point then i still have once again I'm, i know where he has to go We'll, we'll kind of consider it that, right? If I'm taking away his left right here, what's the one thing he can do at this point? He can call a cut, and then boom, it'll open up that corner. He could fade to the corner. If he doesn't do that, the only place he has to go is a drive. So I'm taking away all hands that he can go to and making him play with one hand tied behind his back, pretty much. And if I know that he can only use that one hand, figuratively, right, which is drive to the right, then boom, I can just play for this every time. Easy. Simple as that. AK did not have to drop out that corner either, by the way, but <laughs> either way, it is what it is. Now, right here, I want to talk to you guys about making sure you get the icon switch. So right here, my icon is like stuck on this guy at the top. And as you can see, it's got my player moving stupid, it, terrible. So luckily, I get a whole turnaround. And then again, I'm holding Y for that chase down block. But just want to use that clip to encourage you guys to really be mindful of your icon switching. So last little clip right here that we're going to talk about. And actually, I think we have like two more after it. But this one is going to be talking about three hunting point guards. As you can see, he's got that three icon on him in the first place. I'm on my six foot eight in this clip, which has silver fast feet, 94 feet on gold as well. We got clamps, challenger, all that stuff. So this is a much elite, much more elite perimeter defender than anything I've showcased to you guys in this like you know montage so far. But anyway, guarding three hunting builds, you want to get up on them tight again, same as what I've been telling you guys. And in this situation, I'm be fighting through the screen. So I'm taking away the screen side every single time. Right here, you're gonna see I'm gonna take away his left. I don't want him going toward that screen, so I'm gonna get on his left, make sure he can't move toward this, because obviously that's where most people are gonna want to move toward. So again, taking away that left, do not let him walk into that screen. If you want to change your mind a little bit and be like, well, let's play sides now, then boom, I can just take away his right, tell Tonic to get up and play his left, and then we're good from there. But you're gonna see we do that a little bit into this clip, like right about on this possession right here where I get beat through the screen. So now I'm gonna have Tonic step up to that. And now I'm committed to the rebound. As you can see, I'm ready to play for that box out and everything, but we get them all boxed up. And you know, low key, he actually got a pretty good shot off right here, but he was probably very tired after, you know, dribbling the whole clock out. So he ends up getting a red, con not even a red contest, but a red release on that. So obviously very good defense on that possession as well. So anyway, now we're just showing once again, a couple more crazy block attempts. I want to talk about when not to go for blocks and when to go for blocks. Like this right here looks very likely that Tonic is going to get beat on that drive, but he's able to recover. So I'm, I'm just baiting a little bit for the most part. Right there, I even see another cut. So this one right here, it seems so obvious someone was going to go up with something in the paint right here. So 
Tonic's a little bit beat on the drive. Like you can see this guy's running loop de loops around him. They got another cut right here as well that Bonnie wasn't paying attention to. So I'm just sending it off the wing. And as you can see, Tonic gets a got gets a stop right there. So I really shouldn't have even done this technically because he would have done plenty to stop that in the first place. And ironically, they even get the ball off this because Bonnie goes for a save and then they get it with like seven seconds left. But either way, everything gets patched up. Once again, I'm not getting way too aggressive in the paint. So we're just here for the perimeter once again. So that is all for our clips. Now I'm going to go over some settings real quick. All right, so the only couple of things that I want to show you guys for my controller settings is going to be defensive assist and box out assist. So for the strength on both of them, I have them on zero. Now the past target profile stuff, you know, this doesn't actually matter. It's more just for my career. This stuff doesn't get influenced when it comes to PVP. So just keep that in mind, I guess, because I'm not really running openness for like, you know, online player or anything like that. But defensive assist and box out assist i have them both on zero i do not like the game guiding any movement i do on defense i want anything that i do to be me same goes for box outs now to be fair i typically play on builds that have really good defensive ability or you know rebounding ability as well so this is easier for me to say if you're a point guard that's out there you maybe want your box out assist a little bit higher it's gonna aim you it's gonna like guide you it's kind of like aim assist in a way but sometimes it's not good to have i'll put it like that you know even though for you know shooter games or something like that maybe that's not the case maybe it's always good to have but i think my argument to this is pretty much like if i'm in a crowd with multiple people and i want to make sure i box out the bigger like the bigger guy i don't really want to have to deal with me getting an auto box out over to the point guard when i could be boxing out the center that's kind of my take on the box out assist strength, and I don't want this influencing or moving me in any which way at all. So, whether you think this hurts or helps you for worms and stuff like that, I disagree. I think this, you know, does nothing to do with that. And again, just helps with box outs, in my opinion, that you don't get the game to just guide you where you maybe don't want to go, rather than, you know, some people would think that it's going to guide you where you do want to go. <laughs> That's my take on it, personally. But anyway, same with, once again, defensive assist strength. I highly encourage you to put this to zero and see how you feel as, like, responsiveness. I think the default on both these, I, I believe... I honestly think they might just both be at 50 by default to be real with you so yeah i guess that's my take just go ahead and turn them down to zero that's truly what i recommend and anything else i haven't really changed too much in this game if you want to change your double team reaction this is going to allow you to hold lb if you're in man most times you're playing this game you're likely going to be in man the only time you're not going to be is comp pro am if you like call zone but this being on manual is going to allow you to hold your left bumper to choose when you're going to be putting people in double teams. So if you hold your LB and someone else is holding their LB too on the perimeter, you're going to be getting trapper animations. And in this game where not many people have bailout, it'll force some crazy passes as well. But anyway, the very last thing that we're going to show in today's video is going to be the motion styles. So for the bigs, everything that you saw in today's video was Justice Winslow. If you guys want to copy that over, the only reason I picked this is because it was one of the only like, you know, uh, animation types or motion styles I could find that actually showed a defensive motion. So this right here is what it looks like. And then for the wings, you did see a couple clips of the Kawhi Leonard. I, that was what I had on my 6'8". So all I've ran so far that I've locked in and I've tried all of these motion styles out that I can between Dennis and, you know, Michael Jordan and Iguodala on the like 6'8 build. But then for the bigs, I didn't really like Dwight that much. This Dayron Sharp, it had some cool like run animations that I was trying out with that too, but I didn't see that make much of an influence. I think it's more just about your defensive stance. So that's why I have Justice Winslow. Again, you know, whether that's the best or not, I'm not sure. I would love to hear some feedback from you guys on what the best animations are for motion style. But anyway, that is all for the video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, feel free to drop a like, sub if you're new to them, notice, all that good stuff. And like always, try just one of 2,000 likes. If you made it to the end of the video, and I know this is a pretty long one, but not many cuts in it, I gotta say, I think I was doing a pretty good job with the commentary, not really forcing too many cuts or anything. If you made it to the end of this pretty long video, put defense in the comment search parts my way through. If you guys wanna see the offensive end of this, I would be down to post another one like that as well. But this video usually bangs. So if we could get this one to like 4,000 likes, I'd really appreciate it. This usually always does well on every 2K, all the way back to 2K17. It's been one of my most popular uploads every year. So anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. If you're watching in the future, feel free to subscribe and check out any new videos that we're posting nowadays. Or if you're watching this as soon as it gets uploaded, feel free to just check out anything that we've already posted. So that's all the video. Hope you enjoyed. And that, take these man. Peace.